Hello everyone. Welcome to Darius University, Course 1, Lesson 2, The Frost Talent Tree. I am here in Oldis, and I plan to film these at other locations of the game that I think are neat. This will be a deep dive into the entire Frost Talent Tree within the context of PvP. At some point, I have given nearly everything a try, so hopefully you can find some of my insight and experiences valuable for your own gameplay and talent preferences. I plan to go into excruciating detail on each, so I will be making each of the trees a separate video, with plans for a beginner to advanced comprehensive lecture series on how I personally approach Wrath DK, as well as brief overviews of the more traditional DK playstyle. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. We start with improved Icy Touch. Once upon a time, in the before times, I didn't even bind Icy Touch. I spam my chains without a care in the world, even to the point that I took Glyph of Chains and I reveled in both the obnoxiousness of my constant chain spam and the sweet victory of saving a keybind. But I was a fool, partially because Glyph of AMS should probably be considered far more standard and mandatory than it is, and partially because Icy Touch is an amazing ability and central to the entire strength of the Darius playstyle. The amount of damage it can output is absolutely massive and generally underrated to the extreme, while also bringing the benefit of strong runic power generation, long range, armor and avoidance ignoring consistent damage, and significant bursts when it crits. When playing Shadow Frost or even traditional Frost, you can make it crit quite often. Take this talent, the 6% auto attack reduction owns hard too. If you want to learn the value of Icy Touch and our other spells, Start learning how to fight warriors 1v1 with only your fists, so you can't use any of your strikes. Make sure to occasionally yell, I'm a powerful wizard, while doing it for the full effect, until you truly master it and he makes a salty forum post about DK's OP, just like God intended. I'll probably unironically put this as a lesson in the advanced course. Runic Power Mastery. This is an incredible talent. It allows us to pull our Runic Power levels up to Kamehameha levels of burst when properly timed. Pulling is the entire trick to the DK class, or at the very minimum, my playstyle. This talent makes it all possible. Take this talent. Sorry, Toughness fans. This talent could have had some potential if it was 3 points instead of 5, or maybe gave stamina instead of armor. It's honestly not that this talent is so bad or useless, but simply literally everything else in the frost tree is just so good, you can't justify giving it up with a straight face. Yes, I did try this in a totally serious and optimistic capacity. I even played troll with it. I took the snare and root beta on top. I did it all. Unlike TBC though, Wrath of the Lich King's snares are very spammable and constant. If you're slowed, you're just going to be slowed until they're doing something else. It's just the way of the Wrath jungle. Adapt or die. Icy Reach. Really interesting and often overlooked talent. The opportunity cost is almost always a point in Icy Talents. Losing 8% attack speed does actually kind of suck. 4% isn't such a big difference. Consider taking at least a point in this, especially in early seasons. If you're playing a 2 DPS rushdown comp in 2s, maybe even tank 2. That 30 yard range can come in quite handy. My generic Season 5 build takes a point in it. I don't regret that point. 25 to 28 yard range with leeway, uh, with leeway, chains and icy touches give me something to press as my enemy kites or blinks away into the dead zone between 20 to 30 yards. However, long story short, I'm really just not sold on taking two. For cheesier rushdown comps, something like DK Enhanced for example, definitely take two. You have plenty of free haste anyways. The utility of the long range snares is massive, but this talent is ultimately optional. Don't sleep on it. Black Ice. This boosts nearly everything we do, especially on the Darius playstyle. Blood Boils, Icy Touch, Death Coils, Diseases, D&D, &D. Click Points, Collect Damage. Not really much more to say about this outside of pay close attention to how many things our wizard damage scales off and consider how you use your globals versus specific classes with that in mind. Nerves of Cold Steel. Usually a PvE Frost Talent. I honestly have never had a need to take this, as in most of my personal experiments in the Frost Tree, they've always involved two-handed Frost, specifically Shadow Frost. I just don't think this talent is very good in PvP. 
but I don't also know exactly how it works, specifically if it increases the damage of our offhand specials and whether that justifies it in PvP. My current ruling is no comment, as I don't have the necessary information to make a fair assessment of the talent. But even when I ran dual wield frost builds in deep frost, it didn't really ever catch my eye as a talent I wanted to invest in over the others. Icy Talons. This talent is mandatory for deeper frost builds because it unlocks improved icy talons, which is simply insane for a single point. For unholy builds, subspecking frost, this is our most optional one. If you're going to yoink points from anywhere in the tree to put them somewhere else, like Icy Reach, take them from here. It's a good talent. Auto attack speed is nothing crazy, but it's not insignificant for our damage. It also boosts our Garg's attack speed, which really never hurts. Later seasons, the benefits start to out significantly outscale the utility gains from other talent choices. This talent is strong, but overall, far more optional than any of the other ones. Lichborn. Probably the most busted single ability in our toolkit. The game is unplayable for us without this talent. I can and will make an entire advanced course video on the creative uses of Lichborn. Long story short, you can preemptively immune tons of CC, break tons of other CCs, and you can basically top yourself off from zero to max HP if you properly time and utilize the self-healing Lichborn allows when death coiling yourself while it's up. It has its weaknesses though, and if you and you need to be careful when using it around priests and H pals who will quickly punish you for leaving it up too long if they catch you slipping. Outside of that, take this talent. It's absolutely mandatory for PvP. Annihilation. This talent is good if you're building a playstyle around obliterates. I plan to experiment it with it more for my Shadowfrost build. I can't make an honest assessment of this talent because I don't consider myself an authoritative source on deep frost gameplay. I get how the class works, but I really just haven't had enough experience or put enough thought into optimizing it to speak with confidence. This will be a big theme for me for the remainder of this tree. Long story short, this is, a, this is obliterate as a talent. The talent is somewhat necessary to make it consistently usable. If you find value of ha in having obliterate as a primary damage source in your playstyle, take this talent or it will be extremely frustrating and tricky to use with the constant disease wipes. Killing Machine. Oh boy, what a talent this is. I've tried many ideas to incorporate this into an unholy place style, especially with a subspec frost, but it's simply too deep in the tree and outscaled by other necessary talents to justify taking it as base unholy. The entire deep frost tree is designed around it, and it also is what makes Shadow Frost viable as a build. It works by adding a proc per minute per point, which to my knowledge has been normalized for it not to matter whether you're running two handers or one handers. Or weapon speed. I could be wrong on this. If I'm wrong, it'll be slightly more effective with two one-handers, but Shadow Frost should still be played with a two-hander, since he won't go deep enough to take the threat of Thessarian. I wish it would trade places in the tree with Icy Talons so Unholy could play with it, but that's just not how it is. Take this talent. It's mandatory in general, but you can steal some points for it, uh, steal some points in it for certain creative builds if you can justify doing so. For Deep Frost, Play it 5 out of 5 though, no question. Chill to the grave. To me, the most underrated talent for DKs in the entire game. The level of passive disrespect shown toward this talent as an option is unmatched and it is something I've been glad to see up to this point, as I believe my respect for it gave me a legitimate competitive advantage over other DK players. This talent is a huge portion of the Darius playstyle, and basically everything I do differently as a DK stems from how I utilize this talent. The main advantages is that with a single chains, you can immediately use, utilize AMS or IBF without needing to use a blood tap, D&D, or horn preemptively. This means a defensive CD is never more than a GCD way. This alone justifies taking the talent, especially in the two and three DPS worlds that I prefer to play in. But the raw runic power generation especially combined with the precision utilization of Icy Touched, just allows you to pull so much runic power so quickly without the cost of slowing down your consistent damage. It's insane. You don't have to take this talent, especially in later seasons when a Wandering Plague build is much more, much more justifiable. But for me, it's mandatory and one of the best talents we have access to, especially early in the, in the game. Endless Winter. This talent is obviously insane. The strength bonus alone is worth taking, but the free mind freeze is just insane. 
chill to the grave and this talent just being so damn good is the reason I can't have nice things like Killing Machine. However, writing the script for this video has kind of inspired me to try out a potentially funny but probably bad build for some fun and twos. Maybe I post a video of it one day. You can always use free off GCD mind freezes to clear grounding totems and spell reflex if you're not in a position to disrupt an enemy cast. And having a no RP cost is just obviously good who is to anyone who has ever played PvP. Take this talent, it's mandatory and it's amazing. Frigid Dreadplate. This is uh, pretty obviously a PvE tanking talent. You won't really get any utility out of this in PvP except mating some, maybe baiting some poor soul to make a forum post to complaining about missing on you with, with hit cap and thinking that the game's bugged. Don't take this talent in basically any serious PvP context. Glacier Rot. I don't have a great read on this talent yet. What it does is fairly self-evident, and in terms of value for Deep Frost builds, it's obviously mandatory. It's from my Shadow Frost build that I'm still undecided on it. The consistent damage from Icy Touch isn't too shabby, but since for Shadow Frost it's only affecting our Icy Touch damage, the jury's still out on it. Death Chill. This talent is worth taking if you plan to use Obliterates. You can make a bind with Pyro Rocket and Death Chill Obliterate if you want to burst someone out of nowhere on demand. Otherwise, it's not really worth it. Killing Machine just does just fine for generating consistent crits and is generally more value per, per point and earlier in the tree. If you have an extra point for it in whatever you're running, pick it up. On demand burst is always a good thing, but it's not insane or anything. Overall, it's an optional talent. Improved Icy Talons. Gives you 20% extra haste and also gives an aura to your entire team, or actually 25% and also gives an aura to your entire team boosting their melee attack speed. This would affect your Garg, but you can't play with both talents. It's still damn good though, and obviously mandatory to help boost your auto attack damage and killing machine proc rates, which are normalized for weapon types and speed, but is increased if you have uh, additional haste. Merciless Combat. A bit of extra damage for finishing people off. I think I could justify taking this, but I've always been un unsure about it. I tend to skip it and find greater utility in other talents. However, I could just be wrong, especially for Deep Frost or Deep Frost playstyle that skips Obliterate and has extra points for it. You might have the you might have the points for it. I don't have much more to say about it other than it being pretty good, but, you know, generally optional. Rhyme this is a very interesting talent, which I don't have full confidence I can assess the value of completely yet, especially for Shadow Frost. It's also quite good for Deep Frost builds overall, but it's also a bit all over the place with its benefits. I've seen some builds skip it entirely. If you like it, it's good. If you want to skip it and prioritize something else, you'll probably be fine. For Oblit, Shadow Frost, it's quite interesting as it basically unlocks the playstyle. When I try it for myself in the near future, I'll probably have more things to say on it, Current assessment is high potential to be kind of sick, actually. Chillblains. This is an interesting talent, and I've considered taking it with Shadow Frost a few times, but ultimately scrapped it. This is due to Blizzard Snare mechanics, which means when you apply a Frost Fever with Chains of Ice, the Chains of Ice actually entirely overwrites the weaker Chillblain Snare. This is obviously stupid, as the primary benefit to the snare is it being undispellable by a magic dispel mechanic, although plenty of classes can simply dispel the disease. For Shadow Frost, it's not worth it, and you get your physical snare from Desecration instead. For Deep Frost, it's probably useful, as it attaches a decent snare mechanic to your Icy Touches and Pestilence as a Frost AoE, as well as Howling Blasts if you take the Glyph, giving you a ranged pseudo hamstring and an AoE snare on demand. It could be better, but in many contexts, it's generally worth taking. Optional talent overall, though. Hungering Cold. This is the most powerful and interesting ability in the Frost Tree. It's basically an AoE freezing trap on a one minute cooldown. It's actually so good as a standalone talent, but the issue is, is it applies a dot, shares a DR with Freezing Trap, Polymorph, Hex, and Sap, and the DK kit, especially Deep Frost, has literally nothing to follow it up with. 
Frost playstyle is very similar to a sub rogue in that it's usually oriented toward kiting in between a major one minute CD that you pull all your bursts for. This synergizes well with a Hodge or a rogue who can sap or blind someone to force an early trinket and make them vulnerable to it. Good players will simply use sacrifice effects or shadow or death or simply pre-hot in advance when they know it's coming. However, this is basically a free win button versus those who aren't expecting it or don't know how to play around it, and it is critical to the entire point of both Shadow Frost and Deep Frost's playstyle. Without a homie that synergizes well with this though, or against top of the line players, it's quite useless and underwhelming for how great it looks on paper, but it certainly has its moments. Improved Frost Presence. I don't have much to say about this one. Usually you'll find more value in other talents, but if you want to boost your Sam a bit and feel you can justify the two points, go nuts. I consider it very optional though, and typically skip it. Threat of Thessarian. The value of this talent is self-evident and obvious. It basically makes dual wield viable for Frost. If you're dual wielding as Frost without this talent, you're a bit of a goofball. If you're this deep into Frost, take this talent and play Rune of the Fallen Crusader and Razor Ice for the free extra Frost damage, as well as extra damage on your strikes. I'm not a deep Frost authority by any measure. Every time I've tried the two-handed Frost builds, including Wish Shadow Ward, I've just reconfirmed that dual wielding is simply better, although the numbers on the screen are uglier than the nice Pringle, pretty single target burst number floating in the combat text. That's about it. Blood of the North. I spent part of the Unholy video shitting on Reaping. However, this talent is worth taking as Frost, because Frost doesn't benefit nearly as much in terms of magic damage scaling for our Blood Boils. So Frost is much more reliant on Blood Strikes to spend Blood Runes for damage, or Pestilences for quick AoE snare mechanics with Chill Blains. The bonus damage on top makes this talent mandatory. Regardless, take it. Unbreakable Armor. This is your main burst CD as Frost. As I mentioned earlier, the entire tree is designed to burst about once a minute and kite and recover in between, very similar in style to a subtlety rogue. The rude cost makes it a bit tricky to use, but it's off GCD and generally owns, especially stacked with strength procs, Rune of the Fallen Crusader, and other similar buffs like Kings. The duration is quite nice as well. Take this talent, it's obviously good and mandatory. Acclamation. I haven't played Frost long enough to take this talent. Frost is mostly viable in twos, where we typically don't have as much trouble with wizards, so I never really played with it. Most wizards have spell pen, but you could probably justify taking it when playing with a paladin that's running fire, shadow, or frost aura to stack it with. Maybe it's pretty good then. I don't really have enough experience with it to give it an honest assessment otherwise. Frost Strike. This is the key factor to Deep Frost gameplay, and also why I despise it so much personally. With the Glyph, it's quite cheap, only 32 runic power, and it's very spammable in general to deal some really nice burst combos. However, it basically hits as hard as a Death Coil with a higher crit percentage from Killing Machine. But you have to deal with Avoidance, and it requires you to be in melee range and as the lowest mobility class and spec in the entire game. That's not great. Obviously, though, for Deep Frost, it's mandatory and what is the entire spec is designed around. However, in its current state of not ignoring avoidance, I consider it to be generally trash and underwhelming, leading me to experiment and find more value and utility in Shadow Frost whenever I have the urge to play around the Frost Tree. Guile of Gorefiend. I mean, just literally read this talent and then put points into it. It's so obviously good, and it's critical to the Deep Frost playstyle. It's just a mandatory talent. Tundra Stalker. Pretty much the same as the above. It's the Frost equivalent to Rage of Rivendare, and can be used in exactly the same manner in terms of your prioritization of your abilities. Make sure your enemies have Frost Fever applied for each Glacier Rot plus Tundra Stalker before sending your Frost Strikes at them. Otherwise, you're significantly nerfing your own damage. Howling Blast. I really don't know what to say about this talent. I've seen Deep Frost play without it entirely, focusing, focusing exclusively on Obliterates. 
I think that's probably pretty wasteful personally. Howling Blast with the, with the Glyph to make it apply first fe Frost Fever works nicely as a ranged AoE burst and snare with Chillblains. I'm not impressed with anything extra you can pick up with only 50 points in the Frost Tree, so I would say it's probably best to take this talent if you're this deep into the tree. You don't have to play around it or glyph around it, etc., but it's probably a nice option to have available in many scenarios, especially when you're bursting a plate. It would honestly be pretty good if it didn't have the 8 second cooldown, but that significantly reduces its potential. Like many other talents in the current state of our frost tree, it could be good with some buffs to it, but mostly it's just... Eh. If you're taking Rhyme already for your Blitz, it's free real estate when it procs, so... No reason not to grab it in my view. My current ruling is it's mandatory talent, I guess, if you're already here. There is still a great deal to explore with Frost gameplay, despite my personal misgivings. If you want to map out uncharted territory for DKs that isn't just a meme and has real potential, mastering a Frost playstyle and determining what works the best is the place to go. Maybe I inspire someone else to commit and commit to and do a deep dive in Frost optimization or maybe they already have, and I just don't know about it yet. Best of luck to whoever tries it. Okay, that takes care of the entire Frost talent tree. Lesson three will be our blood tree, which I hope to complete and release soon. In the meantime, you can always join my Discord, a link will be posted in the description, or you can follow me on Twitch at DariusDK underscore TV to reach me with any questions and learn more about how I approach the game. All my VODs are posted and freely available and will never be behind a subscriber wall in case you miss my streams. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you at the next lesson.